<laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. Quickly, before we get into the subject of today's video slash vlog, I want to address me. More specifically, my living situation, because as you can tell, I am still at my apartment, and some of you might be thinking, Sarah, I thought you were living at your parents' house over the summer. And to that I say, you're right, I am supposed to be. I don't know what this little act thing I'm doing right now is, but plans change sometimes. Here's what happened. So my mom and I, we came down to my apartment for just like a quick little visit. Um, this was about a week ago. That was when I filmed my recent bookstore vlog. So we were only here for like a couple of days, and that Tuesday as we were driving back to the house, my dad calls us up and is like, I don't feel so well. I think I have COVID. I'm going to take a test. And we're like, oh, oh no. Um, okay. Call us back when you're done. Never calls us back. 30 minutes pass. We're still driving. <laughs> my poor dad. He was just so out of it. So we eventually called him back and we found out he does have COVID. So we drove back to my apartment and we are staying here now until it is safe for us to go back and he isn't contagious anymore. Besides the fact that my dad has COVID and I am worried for him. You know, I like staying at my apartment, but I didn't really plan on being here so long. So I didn't really come prepared really. By the way, my dad's doing much better now. Just the first two days he was feeling like kind of shitty, but he's relatively okay now. So I thought, I thought of this magnificent idea that instead of playing Sims all day, I should maybe read the books I have been avoiding that kind of intimidate me for one reason or another. Side note, I'm just kidding. I don't really play the Sims all day. I only spend like an hour on the Sims a day. So I decided to do like a fun little reading blog because I feel like that will motivate me to read these books and so that I just don't keep avoiding reading them and let them sit and collect dust on my TBR shelf. So the books I'm planning on reading is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and the Spanish love deception. I want to get to both of these in this video, but depending on how long it takes me to read the first book and how much footage I have, I may end up doing two reading vlogs instead. My plan is to read The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue first because this one scares me the most. <laughs> I've heard mixed things about this. Some people are like, it's the slowest thing ever, hated it, DNF'd it, and other people say it's the best book they've ever read. I've heard some think this will become like a classic. So I knew I eventually one day wanted to read this, but I thought we would do this one first because if I end up not really liking it, then hopefully a rom-com will lift my spirits up a little more. Unless I hate this as well and then I might get put in a reading slump. Let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> this will be my first reading vlog I have ever done, so I hope you guys enjoy it. This will be spoiler free, so if you haven't read this book, you are safe. I won't spoil anything that will ruin your reading experience. I'm just gonna give you all my commentary and thoughts about, you know, the book as I read it. I'm excited and also scared. Let's get going with Addie LaRue. Hopefully she doesn't disappoint. Hey guys, editing Sarah here. I realized that I never gave you all a synopsis. It just skipped my mind or something, but here I am now. So basically in The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, we follow Addie LaRue, and one night she makes a deal with a devil where she can basically live forever. The catch though is no one will remember her. So after meeting someone and talking to them, right after their encounter ends, they forget about her. Sounds like a pretty lonely life. Until one day she meets someone who remembers her, and the story unfolds from there. There you go synopsis. Also, I feel like I'm finally ready to tackle this book. Reading books that you have kind of been avoiding on your TBR, it's kind of like a tricky situation because I don't think you should necessarily force yourself to read books if you don't want to read them because reading is supposed to be fun and enjoyable, not something that you should force yourself to do. So sometimes you have to wait until you feel ready to read certain books. Reading a book is like a glass of fine wine. Not that I would know. But by that I mean some wines go good with some food and others go good with other food. Just like how some books fit your current mood or point where you are in life. So you could read a certain book and really enjoy it one week, but if you read it like a week ago, maybe you wouldn't have enjoyed it as much, just depending on so many factors that are going on in your life at that moment. Am I making any sense here? Or should we just get into this book? Anyways, all of this to say that I feel like I am finally ready to read this book. I've been waiting so until I haven't been busy with college. It's summer, so I don't have school going on right now. I feel like my mental state can take this. Let's crack this baby open now. Part one, the gods that answer after dark. Ooh, 
we have a little picture right here. I love pictures and books. I am a child. Give me like a picture book. I would probably love it. This book, it feels like it's starting off like any modern contemporary romance. Cause like Addie is like waking up in someone else's bed. I actually don't know what the genre of this book is. I've heard it's like literary fiction and then also fantasy. And then there's also some romance in it. This first chapter is getting my hopes up. I'm pretty sure that the main focus of this book is not the romance. I need to take my expectations down a notch. I also find it really funny whenever authors use the word pads, like in this instance, the author wrote, so instead she slides from the bed and pads barefoot out into the living room. I noticed that they use that word a lot in Addicted to You. I just find that word so funny because it's a word that you never really encounter in like your everyday life. Like no one says, I padded down the hall, but I see it like all the time in books. In Addicted to You, they just kept repeating that word. This is like one of those things that like I'm the only person who finds funny and no one else really cares, but maybe someone will get it. I'm at the part where we just learn about the origins of Addie's wooden ring. And I'm just sitting here thinking, what the fuck Addie? Isn't this the same wooden ring that you just chucked on the dressing room floor and left? Because this ring seems pretty important to you. At least it did when she initially got it. So why is she abandoning it like now after so many years of living? I have questions, but I'm sensing that like this wooden ring is important to the overall story somehow. Also, I'm really curious as to who this jacket Addie is wearing belongs to because that's like the only thing she has kept after all these years. We know it's from a him. Who is this him, Miss Addie LaRue? Okay, Addie is getting coffee from this little coffee stand now and I understand more why she left the ring. I actually wanted to update you guys so I could describe to you my love for books with scenes with coffee in them, especially if the characters go to a coffee shop the vibes. I eat it up every time. I love reading about characters who love things that I love. It's like reading books about book lovers. You have like this instant connection to the characters. Okay, Addie has just made the infamous deal with the devil or dark force or whoever or whatever this thing is. And she's just now realizing the implications of this deal. And oh, did it go downhill quickly. I am switching arms. Okay. I am noticing though that whenever I'm reading the chapters from the 1700s, it kind of feels like I'm reading historical fiction because I haven't read historical fiction in so many years. It's just not typically the type of genre I like. So those chapters feel a bit slower for me. I'm definitely more intrigued in the present day chapters, maybe because I can relate more or it's just easier for me to visualize the environment. Back in the day when I was a child, I was like an historical fiction stan, specifically the American Girl <laughs> historical fiction books. I remember getting a Barnes and Noble gift card once and going and buying all of the Caroline Abbott series. Who knew little me was a historian? And like, Back then, I wasn't like an avid reader like I am now, but those books just did something for me. Addie just left a little present for the old man Fred, and that scene was just so cute. You can really tell that she is a good person at heart. I think people are watching me through my window vlogging. This is weird. <laughs> Was that time lapse funny? I feel like it's gonna be funny. I can't wait to rewatch this when I edit it. As you can see, it is a bit later. I decided to come out and read on my egg chair. I love this thing. It's like its own swing. I have this light out here so I can still read even though it's almost dark outside. I didn't come out here earlier because I didn't want to melt in the summer heat. Sorry about that, but yeah, the temperature is a lot nicer now, so I can read out here. Back to reading. Okay, I wanna read you all this line. And it is sad, of course, to forget, but it is a lonely thing to be forgotten, to remember when no one else does. And those few lines really resonated with me, and also ties into like the whole theme in the book of how Addie can't make her mark on the world now that she has made this deal with the devil. And it gets you to think about how you, as an individual human being, will affect the future and the world centuries from now. Okay, Addie just found a used bookstore and I feel like we're about to meet the male romantic interest. I'm excited. I've been waiting long enough. His name is Henry. Henry? Sounds very British. Why do I think that's like an English name? Henry? Oh, isn't there like a prince? Prince Henry? That's, that's someone, right? I don't know my royalty very well. Part two, the darkest part of the night. I would say it sure is getting pretty dark. Look how vibrant the sky looks. That is really pretty. No one ever told me we get Henry's point of view too. This book is double point of view, guys. No one ever told me this. Hi, mom. Oh, hi. 
All right, I switched to my phone because my camera died. I am about 140-ish pages through, so I think I'm gonna call it a night there on the reading. I did a lot of reading today. I don't usually read this much. I am a bit tired though, so I'm probably now just gonna chill, watch some YouTube, and I will see you guys tomorrow. She's digging around for her treat I brought her. <laughs> okay. You don't want it. Here. Okay, we'll just leave it there. It's right, it's right here. Silly. Hey vlog. So me and the Soph, we are here at this beautiful lake and of course, I'm reading, but oh my gosh. So Henry has this collection of mugs on his wall in his apartment and he has them there for people to choose whichever one they're feeling whenever they come over for coffee. He has my heart. I want a collection of mugs on my wall. I might just end up stealing that idea from Henry. Listen to this line. Everyone thinks photography is truth, but it's just a very convincing lie. Instantly, I thought of Instagram. <laughs> There's nothing better than starting your day off with reading and your coffee. What's up vlog? So this morning I ended up finishing The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And overall, I really enjoyed this book, definitely more than I was expecting. I ended up giving this book four stars because most of the book I found pretty predictable and it was also a bit slow at parts. But the big twist that was like 80% through, I did not see coming at all, which at first I didn't know how to feel about because I feel like there were some ethical issues with including that. But by the last chapter, I couldn't have been happier with how V.E. Schwab wrapped everything up and make everything kind of okay. I wanted talk about the twist a little bit more so if you don't want to be spoiled skip to this timestamp. I'll also include spoiler on the screen throughout the whole spoiler section. Okay I give you guys three seconds to skip. Three, two, one. Okay hope you all are gone. So the twist that I'm talking about is the relationship between Addie and Luce which at first I didn't know how to feel about because part of me was like oh the drama but then the other part of me saw how that was kind of romanticizing the villain in this book but then in the last chapter when it was revealed that Addie's new deal with Luce has like a loophole that she plans to use to get revenge on him I loved it. I was like yes Addie stick it to the man. If you guys have been interested in this book I would definitely recommend trying it out. I know that my big biggest concern and a lot of people's biggest concerns when going into this book is the flowery writing style, which I personally feared would make this book like really boring to read. But I actually didn't think the writing was that bad. Like yes, there are some parts that could have been condensed, but for the most part, like the detailed writing didn't really phase me that much. I think people have definitely over dramatized the writing in this book. What I learned from reading this though is that you can't always let other people's reading experience deter you away from reading a book that you want to pick up because we all consume books differently and kind of how I previously mentioned at the beginning of this video, maybe someone didn't like a certain book because it wasn't the right time for them to pick it up in their life, but it could be for you. So sometimes you just have to go for it because I don't know, it could be your next favorite book. I think we will have to get to the Spanish love deception in a different video because I have a feeling this video is going to be long enough. Assuming that you all still want to see a reading vlog for this. Ooh, it matches my nails. Love that for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. It definitely felt a bit different. If you guys have read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, I would love to hear your thoughts on the book down in the comments below. Let's start a discussion. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.